you. It's an honor to be here with United Power. I think it's important to have an action agenda on this very important issue of fighting gun violence. We need to end the silence about the violence. I live in Austin on the west side of Chicago. I was at two churches this morning talking about this very issue that afflicts our city, our state, our country, our world. And it is the duty of all of us to band together uh, for the common good. Uh, and that's why we're here. You know, the only way to beat a powerful lobby is to organize. Early to bed, early to rise, work like hell and organize. And I think that's the way to do it. It doesn't say that up on the wall there. It says do unto others as you would have them do unto you. And I think that's part of what the golden rule is. We do have to pass the legislation that's been outlined here in your pamphlets, and there's some more bills too. We've got to ban assault weapons in Illinois and high capacity <laughs> ammunition magazines. So we've got to show in Illinois that we understand the importance of what happened in Newtown, as well as in Colorado, as well as in Arizona, that these particular weapons are unacceptable. So that's another part of our agenda. There's one called Lost and Stolen. We want, and Dan, that's part of Dan's bill. We do not want uh, guns that are lost or stolen to go unreported. And a variety of other common sense measures that we have until the 31st of May to pass. And it's very important that we work together on this because as you know, there are groups in Springfield that come and don't want any reform. They don't want any changes. So we have to show by democracy that we represent the majority of the people of Illinois. So I look forward to working with everybody here and everybody we can summon in the best traditions of Abraham Lincoln's democracy to make the will of people the law of the land. Thank you. All right. Governor, you can answer from here. Will you set up one meeting with one potential ally on this issue for United Power. Just answer from there. Yes, that's what I thought. Thank you, Governor. That was a good answer and a quick one. Um, now it is my pleasure to introduce uh, Senator Carrollton. You got the same quest, uh, question. We would like to know what would you do on both fronts, legislation and leverage. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And I'm happy to be here because there's nothing more important. Really, in this session, there's, this is one of the major topics. Uh, and I'll just give you just a, as you, you probably already know this. We are the only state in the nation that doesn't have a conceal and carry law. I'm really proud of that. And I would have been happy to keep kept it that way, but the, the Seventh Circuit said that our ban on carrying ready-to-use firearms in public violates the Second Amendment and the right to keep and bear arms for purposes of self-defense, which I don't agree with. They said that we would have till June 9, 2013, to craft a new gun law. And if we didn't, we are the Wild West. We would have no ban at all. And when they issued their opinion, they said that the Second Amendment right to self-defense uh, extends to the right to self-defense in public. And they said that our blanket prohibition on conceal and carry prevents a person from defending themselves other than in their home, and it's a curtailment of their right to self-defense. I don't agree with this decision. But they said that we have to pass a law. But here's what they did say when they said we have to pass a law. Here's what they allowed us to do. We may ban, fire, ban firearms in particular sensitive places. We may ban obviously dangerous persons, such as felons or people who are mentally ill from obtaining firearms. We may require permits that establish competence in handling firearms. We may allow private businesses and establishments to ban guns from their premises or limit concealed carry privileges to individuals who have a bona fide reason to carry it in public. So this is what our task is. This is what we're working on. Senator Katowski was here, has been the leading senator in our state in advocating for strong, reasonable 
limitations on weapons. He was able to pass a bill a number of years ago, which we will hopefully pass again, limiting the number of uh, the size of these magazines that can be in guns. That's a bill we're going to have to pass this year as well. And I'm going to work with Senator Gutowski to do that. Now, it's true that we have a big Democratic caucus, the largest Democratic caucus in the history of our state, the largest caucus, Senate caucus in the United States. But not all the Democrats in my caucus agree. And therefore, we're going to have to work with our members. But I can tell you that I am going to join with Senator Katowski and reach as many reasonable limitations that this court has limited us to do. Thank you very much for inviting me. like to ask Senator Cullerton and, uh, to answer the same question we posed to Governor Quinn. Will you help us arrange a meeting with an ally that we have not yet thought of that will be helpful to us in this campaign? More than one. Wonderful. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Please know, all of our elected representatives here, that you can count on our support for legislation that reduces gun violence on our streets and in our homes. We'll be there every step of the way. But now we'd like you to say a word or two about what you would do to advance the second prong of our strategy, that of leverage. And with whom could you arrange a meeting, just as we asked Senator Cullerton and Governor Quinn, in order for us to pursue this goal? And in order to give everyone the opportunities to speak, could you please keep it to a minute? Thank you. So let me first call on, on Representative, U.S. Representative Jan Schakowsky. We're so honored that you're here today with us. I'm thrilled, to, uh, I'm thrilled to be here today, particularly as a former community organizer myself. This is really a thrilling, thrilling turnout. I also want to say there is a new ally right in Congress, and I'm so happy that Brad Schneider is now a member of the United States House of Representatives. And, uh, you know, I, I want to work with you to figure out all those allies. I think PTAs are a very important ally that we need to, uh, that we need to enlist. All of the school ad administrators, I'm happy to uh, take your assignments on whatever you want me to do to uh, help leverage whatever power I have to organize meetings. I am in this fight with you. I want to, uh, to be there because I want to tell you, this time is different. Uh, when I was there, this time is different. And it's different for a, a lot of reasons. You know, the, the NRA had the field to themselves for a long time. If they said that they were going to score a bill, rate a member based on their vote, there was no real opposition. And so people just took the easy road in Congress and vote that way. That is no longer the case. Yes, we've got mayors against uh, illegal guns. We've got um, moms and, and we've got uh, uh, Gabby Gifford, uh, Gifford and we've got a lot of power. But the real power is united power. And I think that fact that people all over this country and New Jersey and everywhere are finally standing up and saying, you will face us if you vote wrong. So, so I, don't want to, I don't want to abuse my time, but I will work with you and set up whatever meetings you want. Thank you. Thank you, Congresswoman Jan Schakowsky. And now I'd like to introduce United States Congressman Brad Schneider. Thank you. Uh, let me start with saying that I will help set up a meeting with as many people as I can. I stood in, uh, I'm a freshman member of Congress. I stood in orientation when um, a fr another freshman, Elizabeth Esty, looked at her um, phone and said, oh my God, there was a shooting in my district. She represents Newtown. I've watched what she's gone through. I've watched the pain of that community, but I've also watched the pain in our community here. I stood on the day of the uh, State of the Union speech. 
in a conference room with people on risers like we have here, all of them victims or family members of victims of gun violence, holding pictures. There were 40 of us who gave our ticket to the State of the Union to a victim of gun violence. We sent a message, and if you watched the State of the Union, you saw that when President Obama said they deserve a vote, the tone, the temper, temper, and the temperature of that room changed. This time truly is different, but it's different because of all of you and because of everything we're doing together. As the rabbi said, the Talmud says, you may not finish the task, but nor are you free to desist from it. We aren't going to finish this task now, but we have to start, and we have to keep pushing, and we have to push together. We have to work with Senators Durbin and Kirk to make sure trafficking of guns is a federal crime. We have to work together and push and make sure that we have universal background checks, that 40% of gun purchases are not made without a background check. We have to work together and make sure that large capacity ammo clips, assault weapons, military assault weapons are limited. We can do it together, but only if we do it together. You have my commitment. I'm looking forward to working together. Thank you. Thank you, Congressman Schneider. Um, I'd like to introduce State Representative Kelly Cassidy. Thank you. When I met with the folks from United Power, we talked about asking the, the Fraternal Order of Police to meet with us to talk about the contract issue of purchasing service revolvers, and I am more than happy to follow through on that commitment. <laughs> Last week, when we were debating a ban on assault weapons, and restrictions on assault weapons right after the, there was my amendment to mandate safe storage procedures for assault weapons. These guns aren't used for self-defense in the home. You're not going to fire a weapon in your home when the bullet's going to go through the wall. But there was organized opposition to trigger locks on assault weapons. Organized opposition to large capacity magazines. In fact, one of the freshman Republican members uh, who also distinguished herself last week with some other outrageous statements, um, went to great lengths to talk about how important large capacity magazines for women. I'm not sure if she meant that's because we're weak or we're poor shots, but, <laughs> but that, was, that was her big issue on large capacity magazines. And then the Republicans got up and started talking about our gun problem in Chicago, Chicago's gun problem. And then they used the name of the baby that was murdered last week as justification for their position, and then I snapped. And I got up and I pointed out that you can't buy a gun in Chicago. All those weapons are purchased outside of Chicago. They oppose lost and stolen. They oppose universal background checks. They oppose all of the things that will keep the weapons from coming into our city. There is one gun store where most of the guns that are used in crimes here in Chicago come from. They aren't being reasonable, and so we have to fight back, and I stand with you. Representative Cassidy, and now I'd like to ask Senator Dan Kakowski to come up, please. Thank you. I will work with you, most important, on this issue of meeting with gun manufacturers or meeting with manufacturers and meeting with retailers because the fact is the last unregulated industry in the United States of America are the firearm manufacturers. Those who manufacture teddy bears face more stringent regulations to protect us from dangerous teddy bears that threaten the lives of little kids every day. The fact is we need to sit down with these other manufacturers and say to them, the gun manufacturers are getting a free ride. You have to talk to other retailers and saying, those who sell guns are getting a free ride. The fact is, gun laws don't really exist in this country. They say there's 20,000 gun laws. Look, you can't enforce what doesn't exist. You can't do it. All I know this, in my house, when you look at a toy box, it says, be careful, it's dangerous, right? Your child might swallow a piece in the toy. You're right? Somebody might get hurt from it. Maybe it's flammable. When a teddy bear's manufacturer said sharp edges, 
points, loose parts, flammability. It doesn't exist for guns. That's the fact. We have to change this. We have to work together. You have people here right now we're joined with who've devoted their lives to this issue. Governor Quinn, Senate President John Cullerton, Congresswoman Jan Schakowsky, Congressman Brad Snyder, Kelly Cassidy, LaShawn Ford, Mayor Pope, Scott Drury, they've devoted their lives. You have support from people who are out there who will do whatever they can. But we need you, we need your help, we need to stand up and do the right thing. The fact is we hear from these folks and they haven't lost anybody. The only thing they're at risk of is losing their assault weapon. We hear from them 24 hours a day. We need to hear from everybody else 24 hours a day and I'll be there with you, thank you. Thank you, Senator Kataski. Um, we will be there behind you, with you, next to you, in front of you, wherever you need us. Um, and now I'd like to introduce State Representative LaShawn Ford. Well, happy St. Patrick's Day to everyone. <laughs> and I want to thank United Power. You guys deserve a great big round of applause for putting this on. So, congratulations. Also, I want to thank um, Rabbi Michael um, Sternfield for hosting this at this beautiful, um, what, should I say church? It should be, it's a synagogue, right? And so thank you very much for um, hosting this. And Governor Quinn, we have a great leader in Governor Quinn that's going to do everything that he can to make Illinois a safe place. I just want to tell you that also Oak Park has been a major force in working on gun issues. And so, Hope, um, thank you very much. And I represent parts of Oak Park, and so I just want to let you know that I will not stand idly by. I'm here committed with you. And, and one thing for me, growing up on the west side of Chicago, I just want to thank God that I made it. Because here I am every day living on the west side of Chicago. I thank God that I made it through those days of a city of Chicago where violence is very prevalent on the west side of Chicago. So, and also to all the family members who's lost loved ones to um, uh, violence, I wanna offer my sympathy to you. And also the last thing I saw the um, timer, on April the 11th, I will welcome you in Springfield and we should make that day the United Power for Action Day and Justice in Springfield. Thank you. We'd like to invite Oak Park Village President David Pope. Sorry. Thank you all very much for being here. Um, I think I'm the only mayor here, but I'm clearly not the only mayor who cares about this issue. Um, there's an opportunity to be able to actively engage folks who are in a position to be able to do lots of good work about this. Um, just as a, a, a small little uh, uh, point of, of information, I was born on May 9th, 1966. Six days later, on May 15th, I was adopted. Um, my mother, who is actively involved with United Power, who's here today, can probably attest to that. Um, but as a result of that, I actually look at the world through a different set of lenses than many people do. And I look at the world and everyone I see in it as if I could very well be in their shoes. I have led an incredibly blessed life. I have been supported and surrounded by love, by a family, by a community that cares about me and that has provided me with every opportunity. And as a result, through education and through other types of avenues that have been open to me, I have been able to achieve really wonderful things and been able to provide for my family and for others in a way that many people can't. If you stand on the 50 yard line of the football field at Oak Park River Forest High School and you look a mile to the west, you're in River Forest, one of the wealthiest communities in the United States. If you look a mile to the east, you're in one of the poorest communities in the United States in the Austin neighborhood of Chicago. The, the um, misuse of guns in our society is a tremendous threat, but it's not the biggest threat. The biggest threat that we face right now is indifference. The biggest threat that we face is NMP, not my problem. 
what we need to do collectively, and why I'm so thrilled to see all of you here in this, in this audience today, um, is that it's a group of people who are tremendously motivated to be able to engage others around helping to highlight the fact that this is all of our problem, and this is all of our responsibility, and frankly, this is not about some other them. This is about all of us and how many other people we can engage. I'm thrilled to be able to help in whatever way I can. Thank you. Thank you.